this subject, preparing for emergencies, is one each of us each of us needs to think about. Um, if we haven't gone through in our mind and and prepared and planned for emergency, it's gonna it might be a really bad day. It might be difficult, and uh, and you know if things don't go exactly right, there could be greater injury um, or even worse happen, loss of life or or uh, uh, severe loss of property. Uh, it's a big deal. I was thinking back as I started to prepare this on a on an experience I had early on in my career, just out of college, and I went to work for a company that had a lot of employees, and uh, we took a lot of employees and we put them out, out into a workplace where they had a lot of sharp parts, really uh, um, nasty nasty laceration hazards out there, and uh, even though we provided a lot of PPE and some controls, we had a lot of cuts. And uh, and it was a challenge. Um, we we definitely improved it over the years, but uh, at that point um, we had a lot of a lot of blood flowing. People walking in off of the production floor uh, with cuts and and lacerations. And one day we had a person have a severe cut, and uh, severe because of uh, because it cut an artery or other vessel that was really spurting blood. So the person came came into the safety office, ran in, um, squirting blood out, and uh, we had an employee working in there, and she was she was a great first responder. Um, she uh, she had had good training and all of that, but on this particular day, this person walked in squirting blood, and uh, a lot of her training kind of went out the window. She hadn't prepared herself mentally uh, for for this. Uh, scene that uh, came before her, and a lot of blood going around, and uh, what she what she did at that point put herself in jeopardy. She dove right in. She didn't take a didn't take the time to put gloves on or glasses or anything to protect herself. And uh, this was a this was a pretty bloody incident. She dove in, put her hand on on this person's uh, wrist that was that was spurting blood. And uh, and tried to put direct pressure on there without any any type of protection for herself. Um, I heard the commotion and I came around the corner and I saw her there with blood all over her shirt, all over all over her hands, and she wasn't gloved. And uh, and so I quickly put some gloves on, um, grabbed some uh, grabbed some materials to to try to stop the bleeding, and I told her uh, told her to go and clean up, take care of herself. Um, because she hadn't prepared for for this type of an emergency to happen, she had put herself into a dangerous situation, had exposed herself, had this person had any sort of uh, uh, pathogens in their blood, she could have been been infected. Um, it was just a bad situation, and nothing uh, not to take anything away from uh, from her. She's a great first responder and did a did an excellent job. But it, but it emphasized the point in my mind of mental preparation as well as physical preparation. We need to be uh, thinking about those things. Protect yourself first. That's our, that's our first uh, goal when it comes to a, an emergency is to protect ourselves. And, and once we've got ourselves into safety um, or can, uh, can uh, put on gloves or, or whatever it may be, then we, can, then we can help others. But protecting ourselves is the first thing. Uh, so this presentation today, we wanted to help you um, increase your preparedness for emergencies, whether there is an accident, an incident, natural disaster, or anything like that that might happen in, in your area, um, whether it be at work, at home, on the road, back and forth between those places, um, or if you happen to be a first responder. I know there are a lot of you out there that, that are EMTs, first responders, or, or simply have some first aid or CPR skills. Um, those are great, but we need to think before we go into these emergency situations so we protect ourselves. So I wanted to go through these steps, just outline those uh, quickly. Um, first step is admit that, uh, that an accident can happen to us, evaluate our exposures, create a plan, build our preparations, and then be ready to act. And uh, we'll go through each one of those. First and, uh, first and foremost, uh, as we as we go into a discussion on, on accidents and emergencies like this, we need to admit that accidents can happen to us um, or people around us. It can affect our lives. Many times we, we may think that, oh, you know what, I'm smarter than, I'm smarter than those people that get injured. Uh, no, I'm careful. 
Well, accidents can happen to each of us. Over 3 million workplace injuries every year. Uh, almost 5,000 people die on the job every year. 11 million auto accidents, and that equates to about one accident for each of us every 10 years. Um, so on average, every 10 years, we'll get into one of those. If you've gone beyond 10 years, uh, congratulations. Um, let's hope that's because you have good skills and you put yourself in, um, in good positions to be safe. However, accidents can happen to each of us. So keep that in, keep that in mind. Um, we need to evaluate the exposures that each of us have. And when I talk about exposures, what I'm saying, what kind of accident could happen to us? What kind of dangers are out there? And uh, and so let's sit down and write down those things. And it's going to vary from place to place. We have people on this uh, on this webinar from from all over the state, and and the potential exposures for somebody along the Wasatch Front are very different than somebody in southern Utah. Today, Southern Utah has a has an alert out out for it's a, uh, a flash flood watch that uh, is alerting them to the potential for flooding. Actually, I think the watch extends into the Wasatch Front as well. But normally, we don't have that in this part of the in this part of the state. Southern Utah is going to put a higher emphasis on that than than we do in in Northern Utah. Ask ourselves, what's the likelihood that this problem is is going to happen? This emergency will happen. Uh, I've got a picture on there of a tornado. What's the chance of having a tornado in Utah? Until uh, oh, it was probably 10 or 12 years ago, most of us thought, ah, it's not going to happen in Utah until one hit downtown Salt Lake City. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, about that time, I think it was prior to that, I went on a business trip to uh, to Georgia. And uh, I was in a I was in a hotel room and falling asleep with the TV on, and all of a sudden this loud blaring noise came on, woke me up, and it, and it was a imminent tornado warning. And I sat up and I looked at that and I said, hmm, what should I do? I didn't know, so I pulled the covers up over my head and went back to sleep. Um, that wasn't a very good example. I hadn't had to prepare for that. So that's why I encourage each of us to sit down, write down what the, what the potential exposures are that we have, rank those, and then prepare accordingly based on how likely those things are to happen. Um, let's go ahead and take a poll quickly, and uh, and we'll kind of take your temperature on what you think your most likely emergency is. There's the poll. If you'll just click on there, which one you think is is your most likely emergency. I put this on here just because I think it's an interesting, um, an interesting little test to see what perceptions are on on emergencies. You guys are a little slower than the than the seven the seven o'clock group. Boy, those guys they all answered within about ten seconds. There, now you're doing a little bit better. Give you just a second to answer there. Oh, there's a few of you that are holding out, not giving, not giving us answers. All right, we'll go ahead and close the close the poll here in just a second. What that uh, what that shows me is that most of us think that cuts and bleeding are probably our most uh, our our most likely emergency, and uh, that's I, I would agree with that. About 45% said that, and then uh, severe weather. Was the was the second after that? I'm really quite surprised that nobody clicks Sharknado. Um, I've had uh, I I really expected the nine o'clock crowd would uh, would think Sharknados were more likely. Anyway, uh, thanks for taking that poll. That that kind of gives us a a little bit of a a little bit of an idea of perception. What's the most likely emergency that we have? And uh, and I'd agree with with what you with what you say there. Um, Let's do a quick reality check and see how you do. I actually didn't get any feedback, uh, written feedback, so, so from the first group. So let's see how this works. I'm going to give you a little bit, little test here, and uh, hopefully there are more there are more people in the room than just you, uh, because I want to test your perception. So what we're going to have everybody do is close your eyes, and then I'm going to ask a question, and you're going to point to the answer of the question. So everybody close your eyes now, and here's the first question. Point to the nearest exit. Okay, give you just a second. 
Now everybody open your eyes and look around the room and see is everybody pointing to the same location. Okay, that one's probably pretty easy. We all know where the door is. But her eyes were closed. Okay, everybody close your eyes again. Um, and let's point to the nearest fire extinguisher. Ooh, that's getting a little bit tougher. Wait just a second. Everybody's pointing. Open your eyes and see where everybody's pointing. Now, there might be more than one in the room, but where's the nearest one to you? Okay, everybody close your eyes again and point to the nearest first aid kit. Ooh, that's getting a little tougher. Okay, open your eyes and see where everybody's pointing. I hope we're doing well. Okay, close your eyes again. We're going to do one more. Close your eyes and point to your evacuation point. If the building's on fire and we have to go out, where are we going to get together? What's the location where we're all going to, to end up? Um, so now open your eyes and check out. Hopefully everybody's pointing in the same direction, unless you, have, unless you maybe have a couple of, of points where, where different departments will get together. Why did, I, why did I ask these questions? Why did we do this exercise? Well, we tend to go through life sometimes not, uh, not really paying attention to our surroundings. We may get on an airplane, listen to, the, listen to the safety talk that you get there. They point out and say, pay attention to where the nearest exit is. Why do they do that? They even say in the little spiel, it, that exit might be behind you. What happens if your plane has a mechanical problem or crashes? That that clock or that uh, passenger area in the uh, in the airplane may be full of smoke. It may be dark, um, and people don't go out in an orderly fashion when an airplane's on fire. They're going to be pushing and running and shoving. Um, that's just the reality of of a, a, an emergency of that magnitude. Um, it's going to be pandemonium. We hope it won't, but that's just that's what happens. So if, we, uh, if we're going to try to go um, to all the way to the door that we got onto that airplane, um, it's going to be a mess. So we need to pay attention to where that is. Where is that fire extinguisher? Where is that exit? Now, it might be just a, just a factor of me being a risk manager and walking around through a lot of your buildings. I ask myself that question all the time. How do I get out of this room? Where do I get there? Not just because I don't want to be there. No. Um, I love to I love to be out there doing that. I ask myself that question. How if there's an emergency, how do I get out of here? Um, and I do that on intentionally because that's what you need to be asking your, your yourself that question. If I can point that out, hey, there's no exit sign in this room to let us know where we can get out, that might be a problem in a uh, in an emergency situation. Okay. Let's move on here. We want to create a plan um, based on your exposures, and that's why I didn't spend a ton of time on specifics for, for the exposures that you have because they're different for everybody. If you work in an office environment, that's much different than if you're working in a public works type shop or somebody that uh, somebody like myself that I work on the road a lot of, a lot of the time. My, my work environment is, is very different than, than uh, some other people that are, that are in an office the, the majority of the time. So base that on your exposures. Be realistic. Um, this is a personal, a personal emergency plan. And uh, you don't have to make a, an official thing, but there are some things you ought to write down. Write down what your exposures are just because you want to you wanna know what those are um, so you can plan ahead. You should have an organizational plan, your emergency plan, um, whatever, whatever you may, whatever you may call it. Um, you should have that, and your personal plan should jive with with what that plan says. You need to know what both of those things are. But let's take this as a as a personal safety uh, plan that we have that I'm going to I'm going to take care of myself if in the event of an emergency. This is how I'm going to handle that. Make those just simple steps. Um, identify what your needs are. Just take it a little at a time and add that preparation as you can. Really start out with the with the highest level of of risks that you have out there. Um, make some realistic preparation. Some of these are really simple. We all we all know these things. Leave your leave your fuel tank above uh, uh, at at least a half tank on your car. So if we have an emergency happen and you can't get gas or you happen to get stuck along the side of the road during the winter time, you'll at least have that half tank of gas to to uh, preserve, you know, keep the keep the heater on and uh, and get you where you need to go. If we're running on vapors, 
we may not get where we need we need to be uh, during that emergency time. So simple things like that, having uh, having band aids in your wallet, um, knowing where you are, knowing your evacuation plan. If you're at the mall, ask yourself the question: What do I do if there's a problem in this in this building? How do I get out of How do I get out of here? Um, if you're at IKEA, how do you get out of there? Um, and if anybody can answer that question, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll probably pay you some money because I can't get out of that building. Um, all right, preparation, some simple things. Get trained, and we offer we offer first aid, CPR, AED, fire extinguisher, those types of those types of trainings, and many of your employers do that as well. And so, uh, take advantage of that. Get those skills. So you make the good choices and you can save a life. And, and uh, there, there have been several people, including our own, uh, our own Doug Folsom, saved his father's life a number of years ago uh, because he knew CPR and he was able to keep that. Uh, he was able to keep his father alive until the paramedics got there and got him to the hospital. So get those things, um, get those, get those skills together. Housekeeping, something as simple as cords. Um, it's hoses or or maybe even a stack of books or something like that in our path of egress to get out of a building. If, if all of a sudden there's a fire or something happens, we've got to get out fast. Something as simple as a cord across the way could trip us up, and if there's a lot of people getting out, that could lead to serious injury or us maybe not getting out of the building. So simple things like housekeeping are really important to keep us safe in an emergency. Uh, controlling fires. Now we'll go through this a lot uh, in a lot more detail at 10 o'clock in in the uh, next webinar. But control our fuel and our heat sources. Um, each of us, we drive, should have an auto preparedness kit, both in our work vehicle as well as our as well as our personal vehicle. So we have the things that we need if we have to get stranded or we have some sort of a roadside emergency. Um, and we've talked about this before. We've got a webinar that's on the uh, on our website about what's in a go bag. How do we prepare a 72-hour kit or a, or a go bag? Um, this is important to have one of these at work as well as at home. Why is that? Many of us, many of us that are on this uh, on this webinar may have a, may have responsibilities that will require us to stay at work even during a major disaster or, or emergency that happens. And we can't uh, we can't go home one to take care of our families. We want to make sure that our families have that 72-hour kit, so they have the things that they need. But what about us? If we if we happen to get uh, um, have an emergency that's going to require us to stay on the job for maybe even a day or two, do we have those extra things available at at work? Something as simple as as something to eat. Um, a clean pair of socks, um, simple things that we talked about in in that uh, in that webinar that can help that emergency go much better. Planning, preparing, uh, emergency numbers, contacts, and all of that. And in the event that hey, maybe our phone's ruined, um, how do we how do we make sure that we call our um, are able to call uh, our loved ones or other people that we have to? All right, next one. Um, we need to be ready to act. Um, this picture here is of, of one of my sons. I, I took my three sons. Uh, it's a scout trip that we went on just uh, the first of, first of the part of July. We went on a 50 mile 50 mile hike up through the Wind River Range of uh, Wyoming, and uh, just had a had an excellent trip. One of the nights on that trip, we decided that we would we would do an emergency or a, a uh, an outdoor wilderness survival night, and uh, the goal was. To live on only the things that we had in our survival kit. So, uh, so my boys and I um, have a pack, just a simple Ziploc that has that has uh, a few survival items in it. And if we ever go out on an adventure in the in the wilderness, that pack goes with us. And so the goal was was to see if we could survive a night in the wilderness with just what was in that survival kit. And uh, I'm still alive. My kids are still alive. Was it a miserable night? Yes. <laughs> it rained. The wind blew about 30 miles per hour, and when the wind stopped blowing, then the mosquitoes descended on us in, in swarms. And it was a it was a challenging night. There was a, we we shivered just a little bit, but we did all right. The goal behind that was to get my my sons confident 
in the things that they had. So if they ever found themselves stuck out in the woods, they were confident in the in that survival kit and that they could live on on their own. And so part of uh, part of our preparation for emergencies is that mental preparation. I can do this. I'm not going to freak out if there's a if there's a problem. I'm going to be the calm one in in the emergency. Um, practice. Take these things. It might be a night out in the woods. It might be a, it might be an emergency evacuation where we we do a fire drill or or some other emergency that we're planning on. Learn from those drills. Learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, and in the end, we'll uh, we'll benefit. Here's the I have I have to put this picture up. Here's the next day after our miserable night sleeping out under the under the stars in, in with only our emergency equipment. Um, and we had a great day and enjoyed the enjoyed some, some excellent fishing in beautiful country, um, and that's really that's really what it's about is being confident to handle any emergencies that are thrown our way. Just to summarize, um, we we need to each sit down, and I recommend writing it down just because it it brings it home to ourselves. What are the potential emergencies that each of us face? It might be a power outage might be severe weather, the floods that we're facing in, in uh, southern Utah today if we happen to get these big downpours of rain. Um, plan for what is most likely. I still don't worry about tornadoes very much because I don't spend much time in Tornado Alley. And uh, even though we had one event in, in Salt Lake City where, where we had a, a, a major tornado, it's not something that's very likely. So I, I worry more about Maybe being stuck out on the road or or having a medical emergency happen to me or somebody around me, those are the things that I'm going to prepare for. What about getting out of the building if there's a if there's a fire or another emergency out there? Um, regularly review your preparations. Make sure that that emergency kit's still in the car or still has all the parts in it. Um, and then when you need it, you'll be ready. All right. I want to throw out uh, throw out to you to ask questions if you if you have any. I'll check it out. Looks like we got a comment there. Uh, uh, Matt liked the IKEA com uh, comment. Yes, that place. I told my wife if she ever if she ever told me that I needed to go there and and buy something for her again, I'd leave her. Um, <laughs> that was a, that was a, uh, a a bad. She said all I need is one thing. Just go in and buy it. And uh, and it took me like an hour to get out of the place. Um, anyway, I'm sure they have great emergency uh, emergency plans, but it's, it, it is a confusing place. Uh, for somebody like myself that tries to pay attention to those things, it was really disconcerting. Just looking to see if there's uh, if there are any uh, questions or comments there. Seeing none, I'll wrap this up. I did have, uh, there's a couple of, a couple of references there. Um, State of Utah has a great site, Be Ready Utah. Um, and in that, there are links to the to the federal site that FEMA has, ready.gov, and uh, lots of great information there. Um, Red Cross has has a ton of information and applications. We'll go through those a little more. We didn't really have time to do that, but we'll hit those in the 10 o'clock uh, webinar if you have any questions. All right, I think that wraps it up. I appreciate every, appreciate everybody putting up with me for a little bit. Um, please, uh, everybody, go out and have a safe day. Thank you very much. If you've got any questions, just go ahead and, and uh, continue, or you can go ahead and put those into the chat box or the questions.